Welcome to Lost Inwood Panoramas, where in each episode we'll take a close look at an historic North Manhattan panoramic image. Hi there! Welcome back to Lost Inwood Panoramas. In the previous episode, we introduced this great Edward Wenzel image of the Inwood Valley, taken around 1906. We pointed out that buried beneath the old orchard in the foreground were remains of a Revolutionary War camp, and just down the hill from that had been where a sizable Lenape community had lived and made its home. We'll come back to that in a moment. On the map, we can see the vantage point of the photo, an east-looking hillside in the northernmost part of Manhattan. Because the trappings of the city didn't arrive until the early 1900s, archaeologists of the day were able to study the area as streets were being graded and apartment buildings erected. These explorers discovered ample evidence that people have lived in Inwood, possibly continuously, for thousands of years. By plotting on a map where uptown artifacts were found, one can see just how extensive their presence was in the neighborhood. Among the major finds were seven mostly intact cooking pots at Seaman near 204th Street, at the Shirakapak Rock Shelter in Inwood Hill Park, at 214th Street near 10th Avenue, and on 231st Street in the Bronx near Broadway. Three major habitation sites were excavated. The most ancient, studied in 1919, was at the foot of Dykeman Street on the Hudson River. There, archaeologists Alanson Skinner and Amos One Road excavated a late archaic site possibly 6,000 years old. The pair had already excavated another site the year before at the Shirakapak Rock Shelters in today's Inwood Hill Park. Even though it had already been plundered by treasure hunters, a trove of new information was recovered. The third major site is where we'll be directing our attention today. Known in scholarly circles as Corbett's Garden, it spans a single city block bounded to the north and south by 204th Street and Academy Streets and on the east and west by Seaman Avenue and Cooper Street. The site is special because it revealed evidence of the social fabric of the lives of late woodland period Lenape. Specifically, there were numerous human and dog burials found here, and learning how their dead were treated can provide us insights about their relationships during life. In 1890, a young explorer and engineer named William Calver came to Inwood looking for indigenous artifacts. He enlisted someone local to assist him, and together they found arrowheads and pottery fragments near today's corner of Seaman Avenue and Academy Street. Intrigued and curious to learn more, for the next several decades, Calver spent about one day each week on the weekends exploring different sites in the neighborhood. In 1895, he found an ancient dog skeleton at 209th Street near the Harlem River. It would be the first of 11 Lenape-era dog burials he excavated in Inwood. Fast forward to 1907, where workers were grading Seaman Avenue. Calver returned to where he had begun his uptown adventures and was surprised to discover part of an ancient human skull mixed in with a heap of oyster shells at the side of the new road. The bones were the first human remains of the Lenape culture found here. Realizing the importance of this find, Calver enlisted his colleague, Reginald Pelham Bolton, and others, and in 1907 to 1908, they excavated this block in detail. In addition to eight human and four canine burials, they also recovered numerous items of a more domestic nature, pestles and hammer stones for preparing food, axes, stone points, fishing net sinkers, awls and gouges, fire pits, pottery shards, and trash deposits containing bones from meals eaten millennia ago. All indications that a large group of people had lived on the site for many years and possibly for centuries. The human burials at the site all reflected late woodland period Lenape practices. The deceased were buried close by their homes in life and in a flexed or tucked position with few or no accoutrements or ceremonial items. Out of respect for the dead, we won't be showing any skeletal remains here. The body was then covered in ashes, a protective layer of oyster shells, and earth. Some skeletons were discovered in pairs, a woman with an infant, or a newly deceased male interred with a female who had died much earlier and was reburied with him. There were signs of connection 
and kinship and even tenderness. Dogs were the only known domesticated animals in woodland society. In Delaware traditions, they are seen as beings with dual powers, guardians of human health and also connected to the spirit world. Because of this special nature, dogs were often buried with great care. As the explorers excavated, they recorded their finds in notebooks and made measured drawings of their work. Neither Bolton nor Calver were professional archaeologists, and one could wish they had recorded even more details of what they were doing and observing, but were fortunate to have these records of their work. Looking at this field map, drafted in 1908 by Morris William Ehrlich, we get an overview of the site's camp features, topography, and artifacts. The, their work was eventually published by the American Museum of Natural History. And there you have it, the five-minute story of the Corbett's Garden Lenape site in Inwood, North Manhattan. In part three, we'll learn more about the excavations at the Revolutionary War hut camp on the Dykeman Farm, which took place in 1912 to 1915. Thanks for watching. See you next time.